Magna is one of the leading suppliers of the automotive industry. And today we're going to have a closer look what thermal cameras can deliver regarding to driver assisted and safety systems. I would like to highlight the fact that the thermal camera is working in a different wavelength, which means that it doesn't pick up the, I would say, the light, the color, the shape as a normal camera is doing. It's working in a far infrared bandwidth, which means that it can see the temperature of an object. This will uh, give to the system a lot of um, different advantages. So one of the main advantages is that it can see extremely well during the night. It can see and detect and classify objects such as pedestrians, cars, and when we are talking about cars, it can um, bring them to different classes, so cars, uh, buses and trucks. We can also detect animals and uh, bicycles and things like that. We are improving our technology so we can go further down in identifying objects. For example, in a scenario where you are uh, driving on a highway and there is a construction, you need the car to identify a cone, a wooden pallet or some kinds of object so it can know that it has to stop. You will see in the demo that we will present, uh, for example, when the car goes through uh, fog or smoke or things like that, uh, for our thermal camera, it's absolutely uh, not existing. So it sees clear as day through them when a human driver is unable to pick those things up. One thing where we absolutely challenged ourselves, it's um, the fact that there is a new legislation coming in for the United States that will require all OEMs that want to sell cars in the US uh, to have the possibility to break during the night with the car with absolutely no light at all. That legislation will come into place in September 2029. We are meeting and exceeding that uh, requirement by exceeding the velocity that it's required, by not caring about the fact that they don't allow light at all. And we will be able to get this system into the production by 2027, so two years earlier. It gets even more efficient if you share the collected data in a cloud to provide other road users with this information. This is what Magna calls collective perception. Today we're going to see a demonstration of our collective perception concept. And what we're doing with that is we're taking the information from the vehicles and we're bringing it up to the cloud to create a virtual digital twin of the traffic environment. And we can also include uh, other actors in it, like uh, vulnerable users sharing their information from the cell phones and stuff like that. So what we have here is we have our, our Eagle vehicle. And these are all the detections that the vehicle is seeing. And the scooter here this is a person with a mobile phone that it's sharing their information up to the cloud. And what we can do is now we get all that information and it creates a whole digital, digital image uh, of the environment. And you can see these vehicles they start uh, disappearing. So it, it'll grab them, it shows them that they were there and then they have a lifespan because it's only in the view for a certain amount of time. Uh, and so that information is stored up on the cloud and the cloud makes a decision, okay, uh, that information hasn't been updated in a while, so we get rid of it. And this way we can build up a digital twin uh, for the environment to help promote a safer world, but beyond just the sensors in the vehicle. So you're able to see around corners. If a pedestrian or something had a block view or was walking out from a vehicle, we could share that information and they would already know uh, that there was a pedestrian there in a potential situation. Uh, so we could use it as an early warning uh, system. So as long as we know where the position of the targets are, maybe it's not the exact position, but we can have a close proximity and then determine whether it's a dangerous situation or not and at least slow down the vehicle or give some kind of warning uh, to the user uh, that say, hey, uh, this is a potential situation where we need to be wary of the environment around us. Artificial intelligence is one of the game changers when it comes to modern driver assistance and safety systems. But what does that mean in detail? We've started using AI quite a few years ago, um, and it's really a complement to what we're doing on the day to day. So it's important to think that AI is not by itself a revolution that's going to solve all our problems. It's actually supporting the problems we're trying to solve. So for us, we have been able to much more quickly develop products based upon using AI algorithms instead of having specific type of competence needs or specific type of hardware needs. One of the clearest ones is the features because features rely a lot on the input of data and the export of something that relies on the data. And what you would have to do as a person is you have to be able to understand all of the potential scenarios and do something with each of those. So you limit yourself quite a lot. So in the, initially we use this a lot for perception. 
we're using it in a thermal uh, camera, for example, for A, B. Uh, and we're using machine learning and, and uh, CNNs to be able to interpret the world around you, do something with that information and then process it and do something out into the vehicle. What you do is you basically take some recordings or some information you want to process, you put it, you mark it first and you say this is what I'm interested in, in a supervised learning scenario. You then put it into a, um, a machine learning algorithm which basically says it identifies a way to, uh, to take those, uh, the information you wanted to be important and then find it in any pictures in real life. And then at the end of that it creates a tree which basically allows it to process live data, put it through the tree and give you some results at the end saying this is a person, this is a car, this is a motorbike and so on. Um, and that basically means that instead of having to define or describe what you actually want to uh, get from your, your image, it puts it through this system in the vehicle, in the CPU, and then gives you a list of objects out of it. Um, this saves a lot of time, a lot of energy, and it allows you also to uh, strengthen or add additional scenarios without having to redo all your source code. In the day-to-day, -day, what that would mean is that if you're driving along in the, in the vehicle, it would find the lane boundaries, it will find people on the road and so on using these machine learning techniques. It was really interesting to see what happens when cars start to talk to their environment, like to other road users and mobile phones and all that stuff, because they really can react before you even see obstacles. On the other hand, it was very nice to see what happens if you use thermal cameras, especially in bad conditions. And so I'm really looking forward what will happen regarding to the new driver assistant and safety systems. And I'm very looking forward to when all these systems will be in every car in the near future.